Praise be Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. St. Bernard was born in the year 1090 in France. He was born to a family of seven children, six of whom were sons, and there was one daughter. And St. Bernard was blessed with great natural gifts, especially his sharp intelligence, and his parents had high hopes for him that he would be a worldly success as the world uh, lay bright before him and smiled upon him. But instead, he renounced it all and became a monk at Citeaux. And in fact, his family would later follow his example. And there's a, a good book on this in Italian. The translation of the Italian title is The Family That Conquered Heaven. And in fact, when St. Bernard entered the monastery, four of his brothers decided to follow him. So the only ones that were left at home was his sister and his youngest brother. And so the youngest brother was a little bit upset and complaining. And so the other brothers, St. Bernard and his other brothers, who were headed off to the monastery, tried to console him and say, look, you're the uh, heir of everything that there is. You'll have everything. And the younger brother said, oh, yes, that's great. You leave me the earth while you go and take heaven. And so actually, this youngest brother, whose name was Nivard, he, too, would follow his brother's example and later on enter the monastery as well. And so that left the youngest sister, or the only sister, with the father. Well, the father himself would leave everything and also enter the monastery and live a holy life. Well, the sister remained in the world and actually became quite a worldly person for a time. She married and was given over to uh, vanities, dressing herself as elegantly as possible. And one day she came to visit St. Bernard at the monastery, all dressed up. And St. Bernard uh, gave her a little sermon, so to speak, about the vanities of the world, the danger uh, that she was putting her soul into, etc. And it took about two years of St. Bernard's prayer and exhortations to his sister for her as well finally to convert. And then, with the consent of her husband, she would enter a Benedictine monastery and also die in the odor of sanctity. So this is why I love the title of that book, The Family That Conquered Heaven. I hadn't read anything about the mother, so I'm really not sure uh, what may have happened to her. So St. Bernard would go on to become uh, abbot at Clairvaux, not at Cito, but a different location at Clairvaux. And because of his holy example, he drew many, many vocations. And so he began to found various monasteries. And at the end of his religious life, he ended up founding 163 monasteries. So fruitful was his example of holiness. St. Bernard was extremely austere with himself, lived a life of great sacrifice, prayer, vigils, fasting, and the like. In fact, towards the end of his life, he actually confessed that he had sinned with regard to this. And his example of being too extreme is also brought forth in Benedict the Fourteenth's work on beatification and canonization as being too extreme an example of mortification. So St. Bernard confessed that, this, that by doing this, he had actually sinned. Why? Because he weakened himself 
to the point where he couldn't carry out the works of charity, works out of good works, out of love for God and neighbor that he could and should have carried out. And in fact, maybe, and we can say probably, brought about uh, his death. He died at the age of 63 in the year 1153 on August 21st. You know, although that wasn't all that young for those days, nevertheless, he probably could have extended his life if he had been a bit more prudent. He was then canonized shortly after in the year 1174, and because of the excellence of his writings and his doctrine, he's considered by some to be the last father of the church and was also proclaimed a doctor of the church in the year 1830. And so we see in St. Bernard that the perfection that we are called to is not an absolute perfection, but a relative perfection. Here we have a great saint, a great doctor of the church. And nevertheless, there was imperfection and sin in his life and, and error as well. Of course, not mortal sin. You know, in the lives of the saints, there can be no mortal sin. We know that. But nevertheless, there was that venial sin, that sin against prudence, his imprudent zeal, which caused him to exercise mortifications uh, to an extreme. Then again, St. Bernard also erred with regard to Our Lady's Immaculate Conception and her Assumption. And this is kind of confusing as well because St. Bernard is known to be a great Marian doctor. And here he erred on two of Our Lady's privileges. Of course, this was before they were defined. And so in the life of St. Bernard, you could still hold varying opinions about Our Lady's Immaculate Conception and her Assumption and still be in good faith. But nevertheless, we see that God, through all of the illumination that God gave to his mind, he didn't give him everything, but allowed him to err in some things. And so it is that only our Lord and our Lady are absolutely perfect. Our Lord in an infinite way and our Lady in a finite way. And when our Lord exhorts us to perfection, you must therefore be perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. He's not saying we have to be absolutely perfect, which again is reserved to God and to the Immaculate in a finite, in it, or in an infinite and finite way. But he's saying strive for perfection. We must all tend towards perfection with all of our strength, to arrive at that relative perfection which God has destined us to arrive at. And so this day, let us entrust our perfection, our sanctification, to the prayers of St. Bernard. St. Bernard of Clairvaux, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.